right, here we go. So welcome to this DIY holiday fun event. And just in case you have not met me before, my name is Sheila Tucker, and I absolutely love supporting people who are motivated to improve their health. So <clears throat> just a little bit more about me. I am a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for a little more than 20 years. And um, I'm excited that uh, essential oils worked to help with my excruciatingly long, arduous, chronic, painful medical condition. If you wanna know more about that, reach out to me after the class and uh, I'll go through all of that with you. So I'm gonna say this one time, but it applies to everything that I'm gonna be sharing. The official FDA disclaimer states that these statements that I'm making have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The products that I'm gonna be talking about are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent diseases. So, what is your goal in this class? So before we begin, begin, I encourage everyone to just close their eyes for a few moments. I just wanna ask you a few questions. I just want you to start by visualizing your answers and feel free to share them in the chat box. I'll look at them after the presentation. Why did you sign up? Why did you sign up to get essential oils? So when I signed up, I was super duper sick and I wanted to get the best deal possible. <laughs> if you know me, I never pay full price for anything ever. <laughs> and so when I started using essential oils, I wanted to maximize my benefits uh, financially too. So the other thing I want to ask you is, what is your ideal experience for the holidays? Now, for me, that would mean just surrounding myself with family, surrounding myself with yummy, delicious food and being together and spending time together. And I am a total giver. I love to give. But frequently, I may not have gotten the right gift for somebody and they may not like what I picked out. Um, and it may not be uh, as affordable as I had wanted to, to be able to provide for each and every person as my family is growing extensively larger as the years go on. The other question I have for you before we move on is, what would make our time together the most valuable for you? I wanna share some recipes with you that are going to be able to save you money and to help your family live a healthier, natural lifestyle. So there's six common skincare ingredients that are used in the United States, but they're banned in other nations. This was kind of shocking to me um, to learn about the EWG uh, Skin Deep. You can go there, it's ewg.org, Skin Deep, that formaldehyde, this chemical is used as a preservative and also includes a group of substances known as formaldehyde donors, which effectively release the formaldehyde slowly into the product. One of the most controversial of these donors is Quantirum 15, which recent, until recently was found in the popular Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoos. The American Academy of Dermatology warns that the formaldehyde can cause severe allergic reactions. Canada has already banned it in its personal care products. The other thing that were prevalent in our skincare is petroleum distillates. The same oil refineries that pump out heat you know, the gas and the heating to the cars also produce petroleum that's often found in like mascara sold in the United States. Petroleum distillates are often used as emollients and are also found in eyeshadow, lotions, creams, hairspray, and foundation makeup. They've been banned in the European nation. Now we're not gonna go into the make and take of all of your makeup stuff, but eventually I will get there. The third thing that is really terrifying is hydroquinone. This is a bleaching agent that's often used to lighten dark patches of skin called hyperpigmentation or age spots or liver spots. It's also been linked to lung irritation and tumors in mice. Canada and some Asian and African countries have banned the use of hydroquinone in skin products. So BHA, butylated, Hydroxin, hydroxinosol 
is used as a preservative in moisturizer, shaving creams, fragrances, and makeup, particularly in lipstick. Y'all, you eat that, you kiss it off of your wife, or you're eating it when you eat your food. It's linked to endocrine disruption and cancer, according to the International Agency for Research on Cancer. The EU prohibits its use in fragrances, and California requires a warning label on all products that contain BHA. On top of the human danger, it adversely affects the environment because it accumulates in the water and kills wildlife. The other thing that we need to be on guard for are parabens. These are chemicals that are used as preservatives in a variety of cosmetics. They're suspected endocrine disruptors and may interfere with male reproductive function. They're commonly used in deodorants and antiperspirants and have also been linked to breast cancer. The EU banned parabens in 2012. Methyl cell cellosolve. The solvent is used in anti-aging creams, moisturizers, and serums. According to the EWG, methyl cellosol is a neurotoxin that causes DNA mutation. It's an obscure ingredient that is sometimes not even listed on the label. It's been banned in Canada and restricted. So if what you put on your skin goes in your body within 26 seconds, whether you're using something natural or something chemical, it's still entering your bloodstream. More than 500 different cosmetic products sold in the U.S. contain ingredients that are banned in Japan, Canada, or Europe. Many of the chemicals are considered safe in low doses by themselves. That's terrifying. A senior analyst at the Environmental Working Group tells us that what we're concerned about is the damage that they can cause with repetitive use over time and synergistically with each other. There's no research or data to prove that when you combine two lotions together or a serum and a lotion and a cream and a, and a different type of other product that you're not going to have an, an interaction between the two of those. So keep in mind that what we, what we aim to do here is show you something natural and to something that will help give your body a better opportunity to maintain homeostasis. So there's a little video. I've got to escape out of this presentation to show it to you. Hang on just a second. Let's see if I can move this around here. Hold on, and I'm gonna take this out. Right here. And said it's not playing can everybody hold on let me let me come back here for a second and put you guys up can can everybody see the the video no can you see it can you hear it thumbs up thumbs down no yes can you see it I've watched the video a zillion times yes I know hold on just a second let's see Let's see, audio options. Hmm. Can you ah, on, start playing again? Let me come back here. Luann, can you hear it? Can you see it when I play it or no? No? Yes? Can... Go ahead. 
you have it set on HD on the settings. See if you turn it down to the lower resolution. Okay. Like which one? Yeah, 360 or 480 may help. Okay, let me try that one. Let's try that one and see if that works. Hold on just a second. If, if you can't hear it or see it, uh, Luann, text me, okay? Okay, hold on. Here we go again. Let's try this. going on you can't you can't see it Luann said I don't know what's happening there um, can you hear me okay Luann okay all right I'm going to continue so let's uh, let's set some expectations I want to make sure that you know exactly what to expect during our time together. I've got one more video and if it won't play, then it won't play and I'll just send you the link. <laughs> I plan on covering five popular DIY topics including scrubs, lotions, lip balms, soap, bath gifts, and party items. Whew, that is a lot to talk about. So there's gonna be multiple recipes for these for each for each of the, for each of the items. Encourage and welcome all questions, which I'll answer after the class. Almost all of our recipes came from the doTERRA product blog, which is truly an awesome resource and keeps growing every day as people add to it. So why doTERRA? This is probably the question that I get asked most often when I'm sharing essential oils because there are so many brands on the market, but honestly, not all oils are created equally. One of the reasons that I chose doTERRA is because of their co-impact sourcing. doTERRA sources its oils from all over the world so that each oil is derived from its indigenous environment. When they are, when they're grown and harvested in the proper altitude, climate, season, and soil, you end up with a far superior product. And this is where doTERRA's commitment to purity begins. The second main reason is that oils are CPTG or Certified Pure therapeutic grade. This is really important because every oil has zero fillers, synthetics, dyes, pesticides, or contaminants of any kind. They're just pure, unadulterated oils. doTERRA created this standard as a promise of purity and that each and every batch is third-party tested so you can be confident that it's not just purity, it's not just pure oil, but it's potent as well. So this is another um, video from Dr. Hill, and I'm concerned that you won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna skip over that, but um, after this, I will make sure that you have links to both of those videos. So let's talk about the methods of using essential oils. There's three ways you can use an essential oil, topically, aromatically, and internally. When you apply your oils to the areas of the body that need support, they reach the bloodstream within 20 seconds and are then distributed throughout your body within 20 minutes. It's best to dilute your oils with like a fractionated coconut oil or any type of carrier oil to avoid skin sensitivity and always to always dilute for children and elderly. The bottoms of the feet are a great place to apply the oils and it's the most porous section of the skin allowing for quick absorption. You can also apply it to the back of your neck or along your spine. When I talk about aromatic use of an essential oil, put a drop of oil in your hand and then you cup your hands to your nose and inhale. Wow. Diffusing is also a great way to get the benefits of the oils. They can support respiratory function and enhance moods. Now, when I talk about internal use of an essential oil, I'm being very specific to the doTERRA brand of oil. 
Please don't assume that it's okay to just use any brand of oil internally. Purity varies greatly. If it is safe for consumption, the bottle will be clearly labeled with a supplemental facts box on it. Some of doTERRA's oils, like wintergreen, should not be consumed internally. There are other oils, though, that have the supplemental facts box on it. Those are the ones that you can use orally, rectally, vaginally, diluted, of course. Once you're assured of the quality, you can add one drop to your water or your tea. And I like citrus oil in my water because it helps me drink my daily recommendation of water. <laughs> so let's get started on some scrubs, shall we? Let's start off with the first scrub, which is the candy cane sugar scrub. Yay! Super simple. You have the recipe right there. It's a perfect gift to create a fun and festive Christmas. The recipe is really, really, really simple. Most people have all of these ingredients already at their disposal. And once you get uh, your doTERRA peppermint oil, it's multifaceted, which is just the mul most multifaceted oil besides lavender. So when it says skin safe food coloring, we see you, not the slide. I don't know what is happening here. Hold on just a second. Let's see what's going on. Okay, let me go to my options. Hold on just a second. Cheryl said that y'all see me and not the slide. So let me see what's happening. What is going on? Let me, let me stop my share so I can go back to y'all maybe. Hold on just a second. Hmm. I do not. I do not know what is happening. I'm going to stop this for a moment. This might be one of those videos where we have to redo it. <laughs> okay, let's try that. Let's see what's going on and see if I can reshare and start again. Thank you for texting me, Cheryl. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this. So stick with me, y'all. Stick with me. We got a lot to talk about tonight. So let me go back here again. And Cheryl, just text me again if it gets stuck, okay? Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. Make sure that your settings are set for viewing the speaker. Tina says she is, uh, I mean, set for viewing the, the speaker. Okay, so they may have their settings set for viewing the speaker. Okay, here we go. So candy cane sugar scrubs. It says to use uh, white sugar, fractionated coconut oil, and peppermint essential oil. You can also use a skin safe food coloring. For instance, if you want your uh, candy cane sugar scrub to have red and white, you could use beets. You can juice the beet or just use the powder. Um, and then you can also have, if you want it to be orange, you can juice some carrots. Yellow, use saffron or turmeric. Green, just juice some, some spinach. Um, the, the liquid from the spinach has chlorophyll in it and that will also be very healthy for your skin. If you want it to be blue, you use red cabbage boiled plus baking soda. And uh, you can find out more about that uh, on Google. <laughs> it's super fun, I love chemistry, and I love being able to uh, let the children see those changes occur with something natural. And if you want purple, just use red cabbage boil. So when you talk about the candy cane sugar scrub, what you're gonna do is really simple. Just combine the white sugar and the fractionated coconut oil in a bowl with your peppermint oil. And um, then you're gonna divide the mixtures equally into two bowls. And in one bowl, you add the red uh, skin safe food coloring. And then in the other bowl, you leave it white. Now, Lynn, if you could unmute yourself and help us know how to make this layered red and white and not end up like mine was and it was all pink, how did you do that? Could you unmute yourself? Uh, am I unmuted? Am I unmuted? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I just made uh, a little example for you. Yeah. Uh, did exactly what you said. I did exactly what you said. And, uh, and the, uh, the cherry uh, juice, actually. You can also use raspberry acid, acid, which is what I use. What I use. You have a funny look on this. So you used a um, 
you just say that one more time. It got a little bit garbled. What what device did you use? As far as to food coloring or? No, to, to keep it from blending all together. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't gotten there yet. Oh, okay. So, um, that's okay. Your, um, the consistency is going to be, it's still going to be kind of a crumbly, um, but still you can mash it together so it will hold. So what I did is I took a little piece of cardstock. You can also use a piece of paper. If you have a jar that doesn't have a lid that you can use a spoon to get it in. So use your cardstock or your spoon, um, put as much as you want, and you're gonna to wanna to use about the same amount each time. So like uh, two spoonfuls of white and then two spoonfuls of red. Put it in there, and then you wanna mash it down really hard with the spoon or whatever you have that fits. Now I'm doing this sideways, you can do it flat and mash it flat, but just mash each layer before you add the next layer. And I'm going to add some more white, put it in my little, I don't know what you call that thing. <laughs> oh, you're doing it right now. I had it on, I had it on record my screen. So this is awesome. Okay, so then you add the, whoops, sorry, the white and mash it down. And sooner or later, it's going to get up to where you're going to have a, a tougher time getting it in there. But you can, as long as it's mashed down, you shouldn't see the layers connect to one another. And then you just put the red on top of that. Right, the red on top of that. Same thing, and then you just go on and on. So you can have really in any direction your, your oh, layer. So you can swirl it if you'd like. Oh, you could. That would be difficult, <laughs> but you probably could. <laughs> That's really pretty, Lynn. I like that. Oh, yeah. It's pretty easy. I think I think where I went wrong is I didn't pack it down. Mine just got, mine just got all pink because I didn't pack one on top of the other one. It was loose. So once I once I put the pink one on top or the red one on top, it just kind of filtered into the white and it wasn't even layered anymore. Right. This um yeah, this stays layered really well. I so. like it. That's really pretty. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to get back to this presentation then, and um, let's go here and share my screen again. That was awesome. Don't you love this? This is cool. Okay, so let's go to a coconut salt, salt scrub. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, yummy recipe with some pink Himalayan sea salt. Oh my goodness. If you don't have access to pink Himalayan sea salt, because you're going to need about a cup, you can also use Epsom salt for this recipe. Um, now, what it says here is to melt the coconut oil in a double boiler, or honestly, y'all, I just watch it really good in the microwave. I know that everybody is like anti-microwave. I, um, I still use my microwave. I'm sorry. <laughs> Once it's melted, I don't let it like get real liquidy. I just, I'm talking about using the coconut oil that is uh, solid at room temperature. I melt it a little bit in the microwave. I remove it from the heat and then you can add your liquid fractionated coconut oil. Or if you don't have fractionated coconut oil, you can use grapeseed oil, olive oil, um, just uh, you know almond oil avocado oil whatever oil you'd like to use that would be fine too just a liquid oil and then you add your salt stir it till it's all combined and add your essential oils you let that sit until the coconut oil solidifies while you're stirring it every 10 minutes or so you can put it in the refrigerator to speed up that process um, stir it until it's combined and then just store it in an airtight container and uh, rub it on the skin, rinse it with warm water. And you're probably wondering what those little pieces of things, like on the right hand side, you see little dried flowers. That's exactly what they are, is little bitty pieces of dried flour. Um, you can use um, dried herbs, dried flowers, dried lavender buds to help your salt scrub to have a more appealing look. 
So next we've got a beautiful, yummy, delicious ginger lime scrub. Real perfect blend of tangy citrus and it's kind of got a sweet flavor too. Well, don't eat it, but you know what I'm talking about. And people love this during the fall, winter because their skin gets really, really dry. I recommend using this one to two times a week on your hands and feet, legs, or arms. What you do is you blend all of those ingredients together. You combine the brown sugar and turbinado sugar together. If you don't have turbinado sugar and don't have access to turbinado sugar, I encourage you just to use the rest of it, a half of a cup of brown sugar. Then you add your fractionated coconut oil and your essential oil. Just put it all in a blend, in a, um, in a bowl. This is so easy, y'all. You just mix it together, put it in a little container, wrap it up with a bow, and voila, you have a beautiful gift, beautiful, natural, healthy gift for someone. How simple is that for them to be able to scrub their hands? What about the fishermen? The fishermen that have I mean, out in Destin, where we live, there are fishermen everywhere, probably on the Pacific coast, maybe where some of y'all live. There's lots of fishermen, and they would totally be delighted to have this yummy ginger lime sugar scrub to help get that fishy smell off of their hands. So in the chat box, let me ask you, if you were going to make this, what essential oils would you put in it? So type that to me in the chat box so I can look at it for later. Now let's talk about the next one, a festival fall scrub. This is gonna be our final scrub before we transition into our lotions. And this one is really fantastic when it comes to exfoliating and caring for your skin. This festive fall blend is gentle on your skin and it's been, it has like a spicy aroma to it that's gonna leave you wanting more, yum. It produces a, it has a white sugary, yummy scrub. And if you want to, you can glam it up with, you know, some skin safe food coloring. The possibilities on this one are just endless. So look at that cassia, clove, white sugar, coconut oil, ginger, or you can use brown sugar or sea salt in place of the sugar. And you can use almond oil or grapeseed oil in place of your fractionated coconut oil. Super simple, just combine it in a bowl, stir it together, add your essential oils, stir until the mixture has a consistency of a slushy. And you may want to add a little bit more sugar or a little bit more fractionated coconut oil just so that you get the desired consistency that you like. And then if you want to, you can layer the colors just like Lynn just showed us. You can layer it white, yellow, red, green, whatever you want the colors to be. How fun is that for a little kid, right? Makes them want to wash their hands. Ha <laughs> ha. So think of some ideas that you could do that would glam up this recipe and type them to me in the chat box because I'm always open and interested in what you think would be the best ideas. So let's move on to this yummy peppermint foot lotion. Oh my gosh, for anybody that's suffering with rough, scaly, or dry sandpaper feet or hands, this is gonna be a whipped peppermint lotion. Can be used anywhere on your body, but recommended to apply to your feet generously apply it to your feet and then you put your socks on before you go to sleep so that it it just pushes into the feet now peppermint does have a very stimulating effect so you could change out the essential oil if you desire to have it at nighttime before bed super easy with your beeswax cocoa butter and shea butter i know that you can't just typically drive down to the store and pick those up you can order those online i go to aromatools.com and you can order those in organic wafers they're like little beadlets and little wafers that you can order that in um, and you can get it organic or non-organic um, and then what you do is in a small glass container you combine all of those ingredients except for your essential oils and then you just put that in a double boiler type of situation or if you have a glass one of those uh, two cup um, glass pyrex measuring cups and you just put that down in some boiling water do not let the water get into your glass pyrex dish okay stir them until they're combined something else that's really helpful that we've done in past classes is to make sure you have some popsicle sticks or maybe like um wooden skewers available to stir with because once you're done stirring 
you're not going to want to reuse your utensils because the beeswax and cocoa butter, they get kind of adhered to your utensil. So make sure that you have some disposable popsicle sticks or something wooden that you can just simply uh, throw away that's very economical. So again, you put that in a glass container, melt it down, stir the ingredients until they're combined. It takes usually about five to 10 minutes. Once it's melted, remove it from the heat and let it rest for about three minutes. Add your essential oils, stir it up really well. Then when the mixture comes to a solid, to quickly process it, place it in the refrigerator, okay? But once it's a solid, use your electric mixer and you just whip it until it's lotion. Now, um, you're going to move up gradually with your beaters. You're going to move up gradually for three to four minutes, and you're going to go low, medium, and then high speed until it's real light and fluffy. When it's light and fluffy, you put it in a container, and you can buy those containers at aromatools.com. There's lots of places you can go on Amazon and buy the containers. Um, just get something cutesy, something that you want to put it into, or drive down to your local Hobby Lobby and pick up something in person. Um, or, you know what, mason jars work really well. Just saying, y'all. Now, this is something I have not tried yet, but I'm super excited. I'm excited. I want to try this so bad because I've never, I've never actually used a lotion bar before. Um, I know they're safe and, you know, they're going to be made with some love. So I'm definitely going to do this. And it's a natural um, moisturizing lotion bar, nourishing your dry, soothing your skin, um, just rub the bar on your skin and let your body's natural heat melt the lotion. How convenient is this to take camping? After one use, you won't know how you lived without it. That's what the claim is anyway. So I wanna hear some feedback from this one. Again, you're gonna need that beeswax and coconut oil. This is the solid kind of coconut oil, not the liquid kind, okay? You're gonna need some cocoa butter wafers and you're gonna need a little bit of vitamin E oil. Vitamin E oil you can purchase uh, either online or at the health food store. And a lot of the other things that, you, that I'm talking about here, you can also purchase at the health food store. So you're gonna measure those ingredients, except for the essential oils in a large glass jar, very similar to the previous recipe. You put that, so put that jar in a saucepan with about one to one and a half inches of boiling water. You bring the water to a boil, okay? You have your your Pyrex um, measuring cup, you stick it down in the water. Do not let the water get into your Pyrex dish. And then you stir your ingredients with your little wooden stick until they're all combined. Once they're melted, from, remove it from the heat and let it rest for about three minutes. That's when you add your essential oils and you stir it. Now, then you would pour this recipe into a silicone mold. Now, wouldn't that be cool if you had like a um, little bit of poppy seeds or some all natural oatmeal or maybe a cute little um, decoration that you wanted to put in each bar? So you would put that down at the bottom of the mold first. And remember, it's going to be upside down. So when you're going to be looking down in your mold, whatever you put in there needs to be bottom up, okay? So that when you take your bar out, you can see your pretty little whatever, okay? So you could put like a little Christmas star in it or, you know, whatever, whatever you want, get creative. So this one, um, you wanna let this mixture harden for about two to three hours. Wrap it in plastic wrap and store it in a container until you're ready to use it. Then you just rub the lotion bar on your, scrint, on your skin for extreme moisture. So I want to know, has anybody tried a lotion bar in the past? Did they like it or was it terrible? <laughs> Do I even waste my time making it or was it amazing? Because this one looks super cool to me. Um, and do you think that you're going to make this as a gift? I think I might. Depends on how it turns out. So let's talk about the next one that I am for sure all about, some warm body butter. Yum, deliciousness. So this is gonna be my last lotion recipe before we transition into lip balms. Yum, yum. If you're a fan of apple pie, then this is your perfect DIY product. Love apple pie. And you should definitely, definitely get some containers and gift this because many su people suffer from cold hands and cold feet. This lotion is in a league all of its own when it comes to supporting your body. So you just melt the shea butter, 
cocoa butter, coconut oil, and almond oil in a double boiler. Very similar to what we did before, but instead of allowing the Pyrex to rest on the bottom of the pan, you would just keep it up off of there. So if you have a double boiler, use it. And if you don't, like I don't, okay, I just take a glass or metal bowl and I put it in a little bit of a uh, I put it in a pan the pan is down at the bottom has water in it that's boiling and I put my bowl on top of that my bowl never reaches the bottom because the lip of the bowl sits on the outside of the pan underneath it okay so what you do is in that makeshift double boiler you let the mixture set okay you uh, bring it you know heat it together and you can even place it in the fridge uh, after you're done melting the shea butter, cocoa butter, coconut oil, sweet almond oil all together. You can uh, take it out, place it in the fridge, let it sit at room temperature to soften the mis mixture a little bit. Then you add your essential oils. And again, grab your hand blender and or KitchenAid stand mixer and start whipping this product. Yum, yum, yum. How delicious is this? Ah, oh, I just, I'm so excited about this one. So let's move on to some delicious lip balm recipes. Say goodbye to those commercial lip balms because your lips deserve it. These are easy, easy, easy peasy lip balm recipes. Not only good for moisturizing, but very healthy for your lips and your wallet. So this is like a little tin off here to the right hand side. These tins are very inexpensive, extremely affordable, easily portable. Um, I particularly like the tube lip balms. So I will buy the tube and instead of pouring my mixture into a tin, I'll pour it into a tube. And you can label your tin or label your tube however you want, okay? And um, frequently when you buy the tubes, you'll also see that there's label options available. You can print those with your printer so that you know what your what lip balm it is that you're using this time um, if you made a peppermint and lavender lip balm or maybe it's a wild orange and peppermint lip balm whatever get creative uh, and I do want to hear about it I want to hear about what lip balm you created so what you do is this recipe is going to make three ounces of lip balm okay so Keep in mind, you need to have enough containers on hand if you're gonna use this recipe. That's about 20 tubes of lip balm. So you can always reduce it by half if you only wanna make 10 tubes. So you line up your empty containers. And if you're using the stick, you wanna make sure that the bottom is twisted all the way down. <laughs> you don't wanna go pouring hot lip balm into a container and it not be able to pour all the way in correctly. You wanna measure your butters and oils and place them in that glass jar, okay? Bring your water to a boil, about one to one and a half inches of water in a pan. Put your glass jar in the saucepan and, um, and then melt your ingredients. And once they're combined and the wax is all melted, remove it from the heat and let it sit for three minutes and then you add your essential oils. So the, the whole purpose is to wait till your mixture is cooled off before you add your essential oils. Pour your mixture into your lip balm containers and let it cool. Something that I have learned is make sure that you put your lip balms on a cookie sheet if you do not want to get lip balm off of your counter, or even better, have a piece of tin foil or a piece of wax paper on your cookie sheet so that you can, when, whenever you're done, if you over poured or you spilled and didn't get it in the container correctly, you can just throw that tin foil or piece of wax paper away. If you want to make your lip balm tinted, then you just need to add a pinch of like a colored mineral makeup. Uh, until you get that desired color and you're on you know you can use the same thing if you want to you can use beet powder you can use turmeric you can I mean whatever it is that you want to make that color and and blend it up check it out try it out try different colors stir it until it's really good and combined and then you pour it into your containers if you're going to add any tint okay if you want a harder lip balm you just add an additional half ounce of beeswax if you want a softer lip balm add a little bit more coconut oil if you don't have time to make your own lip balm, that's okay. doTERRA has their own lip balm and you can just buy it from them. They've got an herbal, um, a original, which is peppermint and wild orange. And then they also have um, another one that I can't think of right now off the top of my head, but somebody out there knows. <laughs> 
So if you're going to create this lip balm, I want to know, are you going to tint it? Or are you going to leave it natural, all natural? I leave all of mine natural. I'm just, I put on a little bit of lip stain tonight just for y'all, but typically I don't wear lip stain. <laughs> so let's go on to some lip gloss. Yummy. Commercial, commercial lip glosses are downright dangerous, and most people don't even realize that the artificial colors and fragrances can be highly toxic. Lucky for us, we're making our own and it's super easy and cost effective. So, and we can customize the color and the scent. So hot dog on that one. You can see the ingredients right there. And this, is an, this recipe will make enough to fill two standard lip gloss tubes. Okay, so I'm not talking about the chapstick tube. I'm talking about a regular lip gloss tube that has the little stick that goes down inside of it. If you want to, you can have pigment like organic beetroot or mineral makeup, and you can uh, find those little lip gloss tubes online or at even a local beauty supply store. So you place all the ingredients except for the essential oils into a glass jar. Again, you melt it in that boiling water. Um, once it's melted, you remove and let it cool for about two minutes. Then you add your essential oils. Start with a little and add more until you get the desired scent that you want. And for color, add your pigment. If you don't want color, just leave it natural. Use a dropper, and then when you have your dropper, when you're ordering your tubes or you're ordering your jars, go ahead and add, add some droppers to that too because it makes it really easy to get it in that teeny tiny hole for the lip gloss, okay? And then um, if it starts to get too thick, before you get it into your lip gloss container, just put the glass jar back in the warm water to remelt it a little bit more. So if you were gonna make lip balm, which essential oils would you use for your lip balm? I'm curious. Now, let's go on to orange creamsicle. Wow, 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 wow. I am so excited to give this gift. This is going to be awesome. This is a DIY that brings back memories from your childhood, <laughs> like when your camp counselor brought you that creamsicle that they were so excited to bring you, but it was already melted because of the hot summer sun, but you just drank it right out of the, the, uh, the, the box uh, or out of the little package that it was in. So yeah, that's what this is all about. This lip balm recipe is so yummy. So before we, we dig into some DIY soap, that's where Luann is gonna show us how to do soap. You wanna measure everything except the wild orange essential oil and the vanilla extract. You wanna leave those off for right now. Put, put everything into a glass measuring cup or bowl. Then you fill a skillet or saucepan, again, with the one and a half inches of water. Bring it to a boil. Once it's boiling, you place your glass measuring cup into the center of the saucepan and melt the combined ingredients. Stir that every few minutes until the ingredients are melted. It usually takes 10 to 15 minutes. Another option is to heat the ingredients in a microwave, stirring at 20 second intervals. All right, remember you wanna use like a popsicle stick for easy cleanup. Once all that wax is melted, remove it from the heat and let it sit for about three minutes. Then you add your vanilla extract and wild orange essential oil. Make sure you use pure vanilla extract, by the way. Read the label on that. Pour your mixture into your lip balm container, and it's okay. Remember, we're gonna use that wax paper under there. You can have it for, um, this one is better in a tin because it's a little bit softer. So just throwing that out there to y'all. Um, so, if anybody has any questions, make sure that you type those over in the chat box. And I'm gonna move on to rosemary spearmint soap. So here's the, here's the easy recipe for rosemary spearmint soap. And although fresh herbs are beautiful, do not use fresh herbs when you're gonna make the soap. If you desire to have some herb flakes in your soap, make sure that you use dried herbs because the fresh herbs are gonna turn the soap brown after a few days. So I'm gonna stop this share, and I'm gonna bring Luann on so that she can show us how to make some delicious soap. Please, Luann, show us. I can't hear you, hold on just a second. Okay, I got you on, go ahead. Okay, everybody can hear me? Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm actually gonna show you, it'll only take me like a minute or two to show you the chocolate 
peppermint bark first, and then I want to show you the soap. Okay, um, but really quick, I wanted to show my team and people out there where I'm at. So I'm going to give you a hint. I'm not in the bar, and I just arrived here today, and my friend here is going to open the door, and it's dark. Is there a light I could turn on? Okay, can y'all hear the, oh, the Gulf of Mexico here? I know it's dark, I know it's dark, but I had to just tell you I'm in Panama City Beach for three days to take a little break from, um, I don't know, my husband's like, what are you gonna do? I said, work. <laughs> so wherever you're at, you can work doTERRA. So like Sheila and I are doing the Zoom class. And as soon as I got here, I'm like unloading and eating dinner real quick. I'm like, I gotta set up for the Zoom class, I'm so excited. Um, my friend um, Shannon here is visiting me from Colorado, and she's my help. And she's going to um, hold this um, camera here, and I'm going to demo how to make peppermint chocolate. Um, before I do that, thank you for holding that. Um, when Sheila was going over all the make and takes, um, they were awesome. I can't wait to make the, the dreamsicle one. I want you to notice something with the ingredients. Have you guys seen a theme with each of the ingredients? Ingredients. Okay, so I'm give you a hint. I was looking this up and I put it on the screen. Can y'all see that? Like, if a third grader cannot understand the ingredients. This is, I took these ingredients off EWG, off of a lotion that people buy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip this down and I'm gonna, ready? I'm gonna show you what lotion it is. Here we go, one, two, three. Jergens lotion has phosphates. Can, can your third grader understand that long chemical name? All right, it also has BHT, butane, phosphates, and this was just, some of the ingredients in the Jergens lotion. So what we were showing you was how easy peasy it is to make these make and takes. Can a third grader understand vitamin E, cocoa butter, olive oil? <laughs> okay, you guys get what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so um, very easy and expensive and safe. So we're gonna make right here chocolate um, if you can kind of look so you can see here. All right, so I melted. We went, my friend and I went to Whole Foods um, before we went here to Panama City Beach. So I got this white chocolate here and the ounces is 12 ounces. And then I melted it in a double boiler. So here it is. And then I'm going to put don't buy your doTERRA on Amazon, people, okay? <laughs> because that's not safe. There's no approved sellers there. So I'm gonna put, you can put five to seven drops of peppermint oil in here. You could put one drop, but I love the taste of peppermint oil. So I'm going to put uh, six drops because I love the taste of peppermint, okay? So just stir. Melt, stir, and pour. So right here, Shannon, you come here. I already made a batch and I put it in the freezer. So let's go right down here. I'm gonna show you. Okay, so right here, see that? And I, at Whole Foods, I got these organic candy canes. Yes, they sell organic candy canes. It does not have any fructose corn syrup. It's vegan, non-GMO, kosher. It's not really red, 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 but they do sell organic candy canes, and I crushed it. Okay, so now I'm going to pour this on parchment paper. I'm having a hard time. Can you see? Okay, got to move it closer here. Thank you. Can you make it you bigger on the okay. screen? Okay, no. I just don't drop that. Okay, keep it right there. There you go. Keep it right there, Shannon. Got my wonderful helper here. And I'm gonna spread this out. This is so easy. If you get those clear cellophane bags, if you're making holiday gifts, 
This is a wonderful gift made with love, super easy. My hands are clean. I'm gonna wipe the rest of this off. Spread that out. And if you don't wanna put candy canes on it, don't put candy, crushed candy canes on it. And all you do is do this. You can even drizzle some white chocolate on top, okay? Now, I'm going to get this one over here. Can you put this one back right here? This one's already, I put it in the freezer. And you could just break it off. Or actually, I put it in the freezer too long. And then you could put this peppermint bark inside of the cellophane bag, okay? That's it. Super easy. Hold on. Put this up here. Hold on, guys. <laughs> that was a lot of work. I'm sweating. I'm sweating a lot, guys. <laughs> okay, let me wash my hands. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands. Now we're gonna go to the soap making. I've always wanted to do this. I feel like, like I'm on Home Shopping Network or Food Network. I love this. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you how to make soap. And oh my gosh, it's so much work. I'm just gonna like sweat. You're gonna see me sweat making this, okay? <laughs> All right, so um, this is the brand that I use. You can go on Amazon. They've been around since the 1800s. They have tons of different soap bases. I don't have time to make the cold press where it takes like a week or two to set and I don't want to deal with lye because you don't want the kids around and you got to where you now be outside doing that. So I wanted, because we were so busy, a melt and pour soap base. This company has olive oil base, shea, I'm doing a shea butter. This is two pounds. I'm doing a pound right here. And when you get it, you pop it out and you cut it into chunks like this, okay? And it's hard. This one is um, honey base. They use raw honey, okay? And the one I have here is the um, shea butter base. Now make sure there is no phosphates in it or parabens or any long chemical names. I went to the craft stores and um, there's parabens and phosphates in it. Don't, don't even use your coupon on that, okay? Why use doTERRA oils? <laughs> on chemical-based soap, so I recommend this. So come on over here. I'm gonna turn this off. And this, you want to make sure, let me take this off here, so go right there. It takes about 20 minutes to melt. Okay, it takes about 20 minutes to melt. And you just stir it ever so often. You wanna make sure there's no lumps in there. And um, I'm gonna move this away. So Luann, all you did was cut up that soap that came out of there and then you put it in that, that double boiler? Yes, that's it. And you wanna make sure there's no lumps and it takes about 20 minutes. Okay, you guys see that? Now I'm gonna take rosemary and spearmint. I'm gonna do 15 drops, this is about a pound, okay? So, let me get the 15 drops each. Okay, can you see that? One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. oops, a lot's coming out there. Oh, that's cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm stirring it, okay? <laughs> now, this is one of the things I learned with soap making. You have to get alcohol in a spray. I put it in a spray bottle. It's very important from all the soap makers' um, instructions I've learned, and you wanna spray the um, base, and then you wanna spray it right when you pour it on top because that avoids bubbling. And the alcohol has to be over, I think, 70 or 80%, okay? So you gotta do that. Now this is what I'm gonna do to my soap base, is I'm gonna add pure vitamin E oil, and there's the 70,000 IU, just because vitamin E is good for you. <laughs> and it's soap. So I'm just gonna put just like a little squirt, okay? 
And why not doTERRA's fractionated coconut oil? Just a little squirt. And I'm going to stir, oh my gosh, I'm sweating so much. This is just hard work. <laughs> now I'm going to, super duper easy. Okay, hold on. Let's go, okay, so this is, I love the silicone soap molds. I go to Amazon or the craft store, this is when a craft store, and I'm going to spray the base of the alcohol. There's nothing mixed with the water or anything. And I love this soap mold. It looks like a leaf. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to spray that. Then I'm going to pour. So let me go right here. Wow, Luann. So we could get a lot of different molds, even candy molds, and make smaller yeah. soaps into different shapes. Absolutely. You could do butterfly shapes. Think about, you know, football shapes for gifts. Um, oh, that's so fun. I would have never thought of that. <laughs> yeah. So super easy. I gotta get my leaf soap because I love the leaf soap. Hold on, let me get the leaf. Love, love, love this leaf soap. It was an expensive mold and it's taking a lot of the soap there. Um, so I'm gonna do, I think this will do one or two more. It feels so good to know. I smile when I make this because I know what I put in here. And when I gift it, it literally is like, oh my gosh, you know, I just made this with love and it's good ingredients in there. Now, this is the other thing. Remember, we've got to spray it right away. So I'm going to spray it with the alcohol to avoid the bubbling and li like literally works like a charm. So Sheila talked about the dry. These are real dried lavender. This one actually comes from Provence, France. And I don't know the name of this dried botanical, but it starts with the C. So I'm gonna do different kinds here, all right? So I'm gonna put it on top, and this acts as a natural exfoliant. Here, go like this, leave it right there. And I'm going to put it right on top of the soap mold. I hope you guys are enjoying this demo because it's so fun for me. I'm gonna do the lavender. I'm gonna leave my, um, leaf one alone and if you're going to color the soap do not get those dyes out there come on guys if you're going to make organic soap you want to get natural colorants google it okay so um that is it let me show you this luann does it lather it this one doesn't lather a lot the um mill base the uh, french mill lathers a lot when you go um, to this website or when you're researching soaps, look for natural-based soaps that want more lather. It'll tell you that. But it cleans. It's awesome and it cleans really well. So again, look. Cool, right? And so I'm going to put this in the freezer and in about 30 minutes, I'll pop them out. All done. And you can get wax paper, cut it at the, um, the width of that soap. and Put, um, put it over it, tape it, and put a little ribbon on it with, you know, from me to you. And I wanted to show you this too. So with my, um, while I'm here for three days relaxing and working, um, I have this honey base one, right? So at the craft store, I found this honey base soap. I'm sorry, um, honey soap molds. And... I also have this soap mold where you can pour it all in here and then just break them apart. That's awesome. And then, and then I have Rum and Hamma meal dried flowers and real rose dried flowers. Remember, they act, act as a um, exfoliant. Again, check out my peppermint bark. Wow. Luann, oh, how, yeah. long, how long does it take? <laughs> How long I'm sweating. Did it... This is so much work, Sheila. I don't know. I don't know if I can handle doing all this work. <laughs> what <else? laughs> well, let me ask you, um, how long does it take for that soap to harden? Oh, if I put this in the freezer, 30 minutes. 
and it will pop right out because you want silicone. So melt and pour, we're, we're about fast, easy, we're busy, natural. Right. Your third grader can understand the ingredients. Have your teenagers be involved in this because they'll feel, you know, make it a homework assignment and get some pretty bags <laughs> and ribbon and then just gift it. So um, that's it for me. With the, with the alcohol that you sprayed, is that just regular old 70 to 80% rubbing alcohol? Yes, it okay. has to be regular. Uh, I think it's over 70 or 80% rubbing alcohol. Rubbing. You have to spray it. That's what I've learned. And the, the base and then as soon as you pour it. But look at that. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am too. That's super awesome. Luann, thank you a million, million, million for sharing with us. Uh, Tina, Tina was just asking, are we going to be posting um, the recipes? Yes, of course. I will put this um, whole recording, uh, recipes included, and I've got a notes uh, that I can email everybody. I can email everybody their no the notes for this so that they have all the recipes and all of that. That. So absolutely. And um, I'm super excited that all of y'all are attending. We've got a few more recipes. So I'm going to screen share again, and then we're going to get out of here. Are you eating that peppermint bark in front of our faces and we can't have any? Luann, you are such a natural. <laughs> the Home Shopping Network wishes they had you, but we, but we have you instead. Thank you so much. We're going to have to do this more often. Okay, so here we go. Let's get back to the recipes real quick. And if there's any glitches, you guys just let me know. So let's talk about that, uh, some hand sanitizer, shall we? And if I was gonna be putting herbs and stuff in there, I would totally do dried lavender flowers and um, all of that stuff, Roman chamomile flowers. I mean, yum, that sounds so good. I'm totally going to get my soap base. I'm gonna order it tonight. So um, hand sanitizer, really, really, really simple, y'all. Just get a four ounce spray bottle, okay? It could be glass or you could get the spray bottle on the bottom uh, that's plastic. And as long as it's a number one or number two plastic, then you're good to go using your essential oils in a plastic spray bottle. Use one tablespoon of aloe vera gel and 20 drops of On Guard and um, put some water in there, fill it up with some water, shake it, spray it, rub your hands together. Everyone should have this. I have it in my purse. And if anybody knows me well enough to know, I carry a fanny pack. If I can carry it, you can carry it. <laughs> I don't carry a giant purse, I know. I, I'm learning now. And um, I have it with me in my, um, in my car, I have it in the bathroom, I have it in the kitchen, I have my hand sanitizer everywhere, everywhere. So I hope that you're gonna make that one immediately. The other one is a hand cleansing gel, all right? Then you use your aloe vera gel and vitamin E in a bowl, mix it together, add eight to 10 drops, hold on. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Eight to 10 drops of your doTERRA on guard and uh, mix all that together in a bowl. Add a little bit of water and a little less water gets you a thicker gel, a little more water gets you a thinner gel. And then you just pour it into a container like the one here that you see, okay? Homemade hand cleaner eliminates your um, alcohol-based cleansers, alcohol-based hand sanitizers. It's safer, it's, um, it doesn't kill all of the bacteria on your hands. It only kills what's bad for you. Your body was designed to be able to have good bacteria on your skin also. So anybody that has had done DIY hand gels, comment for me on the, um, the chat box so I can read it about it. So let's talk about getting some Epsom salts uh, in your bath and uh, using those. You can just mix, literally take a cup of Epsom salt, 10 drops of your favorite essential oil, mix them together. What you see on the right hand side is just some dried rose petals that were, that were mixed in just to make it have a more colorful appearance um, into the little mason jar on the right hand side. So super simple, get creative, use some lavender flowers, use some Roman chamomile flowers so that when you put it in, you draw your warm bath and you use about a quarter to a half a cup of Epsom salt in your bath, yum, delicious. It's already ready to go. You don't have to even think about it. Um, now there's a few more recipes in here that uh, I'm going to go through. I know that we're running short on time. It's already been an hour and 10 minutes. So um, 
I don't want to hold anybody up. If you want to go ahead and exit off, I totally understand. My feelings will not be hurt. I'm gonna share a few more recipes and then we'll be done. So your bubble bath is a cup of unscented Castile soap and you can buy that at any, um, well, sometimes they even have it at Walmart, but um, you know, any grocery store typically has it. Uh, vegetable glycerin, you typically have to go to a um, health food store to get that or you can order that online. So you combine your Castile soap, your glycerin and water into a glass bowl. Then you add your essential oil, stir it till it's combined, pour it into a beautiful little glass container, keep it by your bathtub, use about a half, one fourth to a half of a cup in your bubble bath. Now I will warn you that the bubbles are not gonna be uh, big giant fluffy bubbles, okay, that are gonna last a long, long time because it doesn't contain synthetic ingredients to make them foam up like that. But it is a chemical-free bath that will provide enough bubbles for a relaxing therapeutic bath that you're gonna really enjoy. So just think about what essential oils would you put in there? I mean, I can think about like vetiver, Roman chamomile, now that we have it back, maybe a drop of Melissa oil, um, some yummy serenity, just how relaxing would that be? Just amazing. So let's move on to some spray ideas. So uh, Tina Henderson and I had an awesome holiday spray class. Um, I think it's, I don't think, I don't know, was it last year, Tina, that we had that? Can you unmute yourself? Are you still on with me? Um, yay. It was last year, Sheila, and it was called the 12 Sprays of Christmas. How did, who, what was your favorite spray? Oh my God, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Well, this is a new one to add to your collection. 15 drops of frankincense and 15 drops of grapefruit oil with 30 drops of Douglas fir and a little bit of water. And Tina, um, now this one obviously is for a larger container. You can make your spray bottle smaller or you can make it, you know, bigger, you know, dilute it down. Um, but I typically use a um, type of, you know, like purified water or distilled water when I'm making my room spray. What about you, Tina? Exactly. Exactly the same way, Sheila. That's what we used distilled water last year. You know, it, it's... It's funny, to, it's funny to say this, but I was staying in a hotel room one time and I was kind of petrified a little bit of um, the bugs that may be in the mattress. And I took out my peppermint holiday spray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, sp <laughs> I sprayed down my mattress because peppermint is a natural like bug repellent. I wasn't staying at any kind of yucky place. I was staying at a really nice, nice hotel chain but you know i just i my friend had um stayed at a really nice hotel not too long before that and um she had picked up like bed bugs and um or scabies and i was like oh my gosh i do not want ever to get that and so i was a little paranoid <laughs> at the time and i sprayed down my mattress and then i remade the bed <laughs> wonderful so anyway, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I appreciate it. So y'all chat about it. What um, This is something that's kind of cool. If you have a glass spray bottle that's clear and you make this holiday room spray and you put some fresh cranberries in there, how awesome would that be in a guest room for a real festive touch? Maybe tie a real little silver ribbon around the top so that they can just shake it and spray it in their room. How nice is that? Just throwing that out there. Okay, let's move on to some citrus air freshener. I don't know about y'all, but I love it, love it, love it when I can set the mood by engaging in a positive scent. There's many products available on the market that are going to help your home. Um, with fragrance, but they're filled, filled, filled with chemicals that are damaging your health. An easy way to save money and reduce the amount of chemicals because um, whenever you use your spray bottle, you're gonna reuse that. You're recycling that every single solitary time that you make this um, citrus air freshener. So reducing the amount of chemicals and um, making it with your healthy essential oils, and it only takes literally two ingredients. It's all natural 
and it's going to give your home a yummy, fresh smell. You can use distilled water in an eight ounce sprayer with about 20 drops of wild orange. If you don't like wild orange, if it's not that, if that's not the scent that you want, use one that you like. You could use um, lavender, you could use uh, bergamot or lime or lemon anything that you want simply combine it and every time that you want to spray it just shake it real well to mix the oil in the water and then and then spray it you can use it on furniture carpet your car your bathroom and anywhere else that you want to be freshened up i've actually mopped my floor with this before too y'all don't there's no judgment here y'all <laughs> no judgment Okay, super easy and very, very creative and very fun. Everyone always enjoys a, fa a flavored toothpick. They're great for freshening your breath, cleaning out your teeth, fighting off sweet tooth cravings. All you need is toothpicks, a glass jar, and some fractionated coconut oil. Super simple. You just put in the glass jar, you put your fractionated coconut oil in a little mason jar. Just think about a little mason jar. You only need about a quarter inch in the bottom of a mason jar of your fractionated coconut oil. For mild cinnamon flavored toothpicks, add 10 drops of cinnamon bark essential oil to the jar, and then you can add more drops for a stronger flavor. You place the toothpicks in the jar, then you let the toothpicks sit in the oil mixture for about eight hours. And what will happen is that the wood will wick that oil solution into the toothpick and it will be absorbed. After all of the mixture is absorbed into the toothpick, then you just lay them on a plate or a cookie sheet, let them dry for about 24 hours, and then you place the flavored toothpicks in a small tin or a glass jar, keep them in your car, keep them in your purse, keep them out so other people can enjoy them. Try different flavors like peppermint, maybe some slim and sassy toothpicks, maybe on guard toothpicks, wild orange toothpicks, or um, even fennel and cinnamon toothpicks. How fun would that be? Combine it, get creative, make your own flavor combination. Chat to me, tell me what you would like to see as a flavor combination, maybe peppermint and grapefruit. I mean, the options are seriously endless. So think about that. Now, one of the last recipes that I'm going to share is the infamous salt dough ornament. All right. Such a special holiday gift, easy, thoughtful, everyone can do it. All right. Um, mix the, preheat the oven to 325 degrees, pour your flour, salt, and warm water into a large bowl, and using your hand, knead all of the ingredients until they're well incorporated and the dough is nice and smooth. If your mixture is too dry, add a tablespoon of water at a time until your dough comes together. Then you want to roll it out on a floured surface until it's about a quarter inch thick. I don't have a rolling pin, but I have a lot of other round objects and I can roll with those things. So using cookie cutters, cut out your design shapes, cut out the shapes, place them on a cookie sheet that's lined with parchment paper. Then you wanna use like a drinking straw, a sturdy drinking straw, okay? And, um, and put a hole in the top where you're going to put your ribbon at. All right, so put that, put your hole in there, make your hole for your ornament, and then place it in the oven until it's hard, which takes about an hour. Once it's hard, you remove it from the oven and cool it down. Then you can decorate it, paint it, put string on it, glitter it, glue it, whatever you want, stamp it up. And for aromatherapy, that's when you would add your essential oil by placing one drop on the ornament and allowing it to soak in. So if you want to, um, you know, bake, if you don't have to bake your ornament, okay, because uh, the dough is going to turn slightly brown and may puff up a little bit. So if you prefer, you can just let your ornaments air dry for about two to three days, and then they'll remain flat and white. So just FYI for that little DIY tip. I was thinking about making them and putting that holiday joy on them and hanging them all over my Christmas tree. What do y'all think? I think that'd be really yummy. Somebody might try to eat my tree like my dog. <laughs> So the next thing that I typically do, oh, oh you definitely need your shopping list. So um, I will make sure that I, I send this presentation out because you're gonna need to have number one, essential oils, and number two, you're gonna need to have all of the ingredients down on the bottom left as well. So I will make sure to send all that out to you. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably like super excited. Now what, now what do I do? 
what do I use, how do I get started, and I want you to let, want to let you know you're never alone on your essential oil journey. I will personally be here and guide you every step of the way with answers to your questions, a resource, introduction to other people who are on this journey with us. In addition, I have a really special email series that I can send to all new oil users that lays a foundation of knowledge and awareness for incorporating essential oils into their lives. There's a number of ways to get started using essential oils for yourself, okay? If you are not currently an essential oil user, I'm gonna discuss that now. However, I do want to give people the opportunity, since I'm over my time limit, I do want to give the people the opportunity that already know and have already become involved and become wellness advocates. If you desire, all you have to do is hover over your screen and you will see that you can leave the meeting at any time. For anybody that wants to become a wholesale customer or retail customer, please remain online with me. The other thing I'd like to tell you is if you would like to be involved in my special email series for your essential oil journey, please email me at floridaoilsrn at gmail.com. Again, that's floridaoilsrn, R is in registered, N is in nurse, at gmail.com. And I'll make sure to add you to my email list. You can also call me at 850-621-2675, and I'll be glad to help you with any of your oil-related questions. So how do you become a wellness advocate? Well, I remember the first class that I went to. It was not like this one. <laughs> I uh, wish, uh, but there was a lot of really fun things to do in that class. I was super excited and partially overwhelmed by the variety of all the oils and their seemingly limitless applications. However, I was assured that I would have support and I absolutely cherished the adventure. My life changed because doTERRA's essential oils and I'm confident that you will have the same experience once you get started. There's three ways to begin using doTERRA essential oils. Number one, you can purchase the oils at full retail price, which is the most expensive way and totally not recommended. Who wants to, do, who wants to pay retail, right? Number two, you can pay a $35 membership fee, sort of like a Costco membership, and you can then purchase your oils at wholesale and pay uh, the wholesale price, and you get 25% off of retail, which is totally awesome. You can also purchase an enrollment kit, and with an enrollment kit, your membership fee is waived, and your kits of oils um, with all of their wholesale pricing. I totally love the kits. I'm not gonna go into the kits tonight, but we can discuss that later. I'd recommend option two or three from the above base decisions, and you can visit my website um, at uh, Florida Oils RN. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and um, you can email me, and we can talk about your wholesale membership. Again, I wanna remind you, whoever invited you to this class, you need to go back to that person and talk to them about essential oils and how to get involved. If you're not sure which option most benefits you and your family, please send me a Facebook message or email me um, so that I can help guide you to the best decision for yourself. So I wanna thank everybody for coming and participating in this awesome DIY holiday fun class. I'm going to minimize this. I enjoy you very much and I'm so thankful that everybody was on tonight and does anybody want to unmute themselves and discuss any questions? Get the angel cookie cutter for your tree, Sheila. Ooh, there's an angel one? I, I got the one from Pampered Chef. It's got like a whole bunch of different shapes. Where would I get an angel cookie cutter at, Tina? You can find an angel cookie cutter at probably any craft store or any good kitchen store. And that would be real pretty to leave it white and just have them all over the tree. Oh my gosh, you are so smart. That is such a smart idea. And I totally agree with you. I, when, I, when I did this presentation, when I was putting it together, I was thinking about that cinnamon candy tin. And I was like, that would be perfect for those toothpicks. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad that you guys enjoyed all the recipes. I love putting stuff like this together. Um, I, am, I am so excited to be able to uh, bring everybody some awesome, yummy recipes uh, for, you know, Christmas this year.